Hello students, today we are going to learn about waterfall model. So as we know that software development goes through diff many phases, right? So for, that, for, for those phases and to make sure that our, we build a very quality product, we have to make sure that we uh, go sequentially for this uh, development of our software. So one of the models which helps us to build a quality product and make sure that we go to go through the uh, stages sequentially is waterfall model. So waterfall model is a software development method. It is a methodology that helps us and which follows a linear sequential approach, right? So we have, as we know that in the software development life cycle, we have many stages, right? So we, this uh, model makes sure that we move through those uh, phases in a sequential manner. It consists of several stages that must be completed in a sequential manner, right? So this model helps us in moving through those phases in a sequential manner and make sure that we built a very useful and a quality product which will be uh, which will uh, satisfy our customers and also will be very useful for our uh, users, right? So we'll go through one by we'll go through these phases one by one and we will see how the waterfall model actually works. So this uh, on the screen we can see the waterfall model and the different uh, phases it goes through right so the first one is the feasibility study what is feasibility study right so the main aim of feasibility study is to determine whether it would be financially and technically feasible to develop the product what do you mean by financially and uh, technically feasible now when if suppose we have a client and which who wants to build a product now he has told his requirements and without uh, the background check we have agreed to build a product for them now when we are on the go and we are building building our product we have found out that we don't we are not technically strong enough we don't have a team which is strong uh, technically strong who can build a product which our client requires and we don't have the we don't have the funds which will be required to build the, this uh, kind of product so it is very important that we have to make sure that before we start to build our product we have to make that sure that we are technically very strong we are financially very strong and we can build a quality product and we can deliver those products to our customer according to their requirements right so the first stage is feasibility study next stage is requirement analysis and specification now here the main aim is to uh, is that the requ requirement analysis and the requirement specification now what what is the difference between requirement gathering analysis and requirement specification right now for example you are building a product which has a uh, with application and which has a registration page right now now when i say i need a rec i need a registration page that comes under requirement gathering and specification and anal analysis i am telling that i need a registration page but when i say that in my registration page i need to have the customer name the gender of the customer the age of the customer his address his mobile number now here i am giving the specifications of my requirement so the, here we have to make sure that we are giving we are giving the requirements which are important and we are giving a specific information which we need in our product in our end product right so it is a very important and a very crucial stage here we have we have to make a document from which are uh, which are client will be giving us that we need all these requirements in our end product so uh, we have to make sure that we we note down all these requirements and we move according to that and we plan our software according to that right now next stage is designing the product now once we have done our feasibility study we have we have gathered all the requirements and we are we have all the specific requirements which we want now we'll design all the modules that will be we will be designing suppose we will be having a login page we'll be having a registration page then after login we'll end up on the home page right so we have to design all these pages that is modules we have to design all these modules 
now this uh, the goal of this phase is to convert the requirements acquired in the srs into the format that can be coded in a programming language srs is a software requirement specification document which will, will be which will be created in the second step of the second step of the uh, 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 development srs document will have all the requirements and the specifications of given by the client so according to that requirements we will be designing all the modules and that will be coded in the programming language right next phase is coding and unit testing now once we have designed all the modules now we will select a programming language of our uh, of our choice for example java or python whatever suits the programmers and we will go ahead and we will build the product now as we are building the product we have to make sure that we are also testing the product right we have built a registration page now we will test the registration page first that is the num if if i have a if i have a column if i have a, a tab where i have to uh, where i have to include the phone number now that should only accept the four uh, digits if i have to specify my name so it should only take the n characters of uh, the characters right so we have to do the testing on the go and we have to do the testing unit wise right so we have to make sure that every module is being developed uh, that is coded and we have to make sure that after coding them we test the modules individually that is what we do in the unit testing right now next phase is integration and system testing now in integration testing we test different modules that are undertaken soon after they have been coded and been unit tested right so once we have individually tested all the product uh, all the modules we integrate them we combine them as a group and then we and when then we test them according to that right so during the integration step the previously planned modules are added to the partially integrated uh, system and then they are and the resulted system is tested after all the modules have been uh, successfully uh, integrated and tested a full working system is obtained and the system is uh, system testing is system testing is carried out on this end product right so we have to make sure that we design all the modules according to the requirements given by the clients and then we code those uh, code those designs and modules according to uh, with our, our own choice of uh, of language and then we have to test first it unit wise that is module wise and then we have to integrate those modules and test is and then when the whole product is been developed and built we do the system testing next step and the very important step is maintenance now maintenance takes the 60 if 60 percent of the total effort spent on the development of a full software now you, with this statement you can you can uh, analyze that how much time uh, how much uh, importance uh, the maintenance phase takes place right so uh, after the, we have de delivered our product to the customers we have to make sure that the maintenance step phase also is being carried out throughout our product right so that's why it is a very important phase in the software life cycle now why we have to why we use the soft waterfall model why we use is because it is very easy to understand obviously because step by step we go through all the modules we have clear milestones right we know in each phase what we have to do and what we don't have to do right in the designing phase we'll do only designing in the coding phase we only code the uh, code the product and in the uh, testing phase we only test the product right now next uh, next advantage we have is properly documented as we know when we in the second phase we we gather the requirements so it is very properly pro documented in the srs document right next we have the working the working of the product as we test all the phases and we built and tested simultaneously we have we can make we can give the surety that we have a working product which is a very good quality and which it, it can be very user friendly and good for the client now what are the de demerits of the uh, waterfall model so obviously as i said we go step by step and phase by phase in the waterfall model so once we have moved from one phase to the another you cannot go back to the first phase right you have to uh, it will it will be a very lengthy process 
there is no overlapping of the phases and it is it is difficult to accommodate changes change request in the middle right so we have to wait for all the things to done and then we will be able to uh, make the changes so that's for all for the waterfall model thank you students